say hi to the peoples. This is Gigi's second appearance on my channel, I think, or maybe third, I don't know. But everybody say hi to Gigi. She's one years old, she's my baby. You can actually be in this one, Gigi. Like I, I made this video specifically for you so that you could be in it. You don't wanna be in it? Okay, so we're gonna be talking about dog owning in this video. I'm gonna be talking all about my experience with having a dog, um, what that experience has been like for me. And if you guys don't know, I've had a dog for about a year. No, that's a lie. It has not been a year yet. January, February, March, April, May, June. I've had her for almost nine months. My intention was to make a video talking all about her, talking about, I wanna zoom in, I feel so far. Originally I wanted to make this video because a lot of people had already asked me about owning a dog, what that was like. Basically all the things you need to know if you want a dog. Um, and so I wanted to just make a video being candid with you guys, talking about my experience. Um, I'm not an expert by any means, so this is gonna be a real raw and uh, real recognized real kind of video where I just basically give you my, my thoughts, my opinions, my experience, and it's not necessarily advice it's just what I've done thus, thus far and what I think you need to know if you plan on getting a dog so obviously you're watching this video because you wanted to know more about dog owning because you're thinking about getting a dog or you may already have one and you just want to know if my experience is like yours but if you are thinking about getting a dog congratulations for wanting to be a dog mommy or daddy I'm so excited for you um, I really enjoy being a dog mommy I'm going to tell you guys about the process before I get into you guys questions so well what I first got married and I moved in with my husband we couldn't have a dog because of the place that we lived in our landlord would not let us have a dog so when I, I told myself that when I moved I wanted to like I was gonna think about getting a dog growing up I had like three or four dogs growing up um, but I never got super attached to them because I didn't take care of them by myself my mom was the sole caregiver and she did not like taking care of dogs because she didn't like getting attached but I can remember having dogs and really liking them. Before making my decision, I, I did a lot of pondering first. I think I waited for like a year before I even started researching. But I do think that it is important to research. So if you're going to get a dog, I think the first thing you should do is definitely do your research. Um, definitely see what you're getting yourself into because every dog is different. Um, and you're in for something different with every kind of dog. You kind of want to be sure that what you're getting is actually what you're looking for and not just something that you just want to do just because you see somebody do it and think it's cute. Because it is work. Dogs are work. It's not like you don't do anything with them. Like they just stay outside all day and you don't take care of them. At least not the dog that I have. So around last year was when I really decided that I wanted a dog. It was the first year living in our new house, which is the house I'm in now. And we are the owners of this house now. So I could get a dog if I wanted to. The winter's here are harsh and brutal and my husband works a lot and he works far so uh, I knew I wanted something living and breathing in the house with me and I've tried to have plants and I kill them every time so I was like uh, I need something that actually moves and makes noise um, in the house with me and so the easiest most feasible way to do that would be to get a pet uh, and the only pets that I like are dogs I really don't like any other pets I mean I like animals but I don't I mean you can't really cuddle with like a gecko I'm used to having a lot of people coming in and out a lot of traffic within the house and I'm used to people like being around me all the time so now living here and I'm mostly by myself all the time and I work from home I don't get a lot of human interaction so I needed somebody to be the gap filler um, for my situation you know I've read up on dogs and how they help with emotional stress and they help deal with those kinds of issues if you have depression anxiety any kind of that stuff I was gonna go to a breeder um, because I knew the specific type of dog that I wanted I know I wanted a cockapoo they're so sweet they're so cute and they're very mild tempered like they have a very calm temperament I know I'm not a very active person and so I didn't want a dog that I have to take out all the time and like run around with it all day you know what I mean like I looked up these things like the type of temperament you know activity that the dog was gonna be like so I made sure that it, I got something that I wanted and that was going to work for my lifestyle and so I did a lot of research on poodle mixes which ones were like the best temperament which ones were um, didn't shed were easy to take care of clean up after like poodle mixes um, small dogs are considered designer dogs and I, you, you can't really find those at shelters so I started trying to find some breeders that specialize in breeding cockapoos poodle mixes things of that sort and they all were coming up to about 700 between 700 and 1500 dollars and I was like, for a dog? I actually went to a pet store to look at dogs, which was a bad idea because pet stores have what they call puppy meal 
dogs and puppy mills is when like they basically breed dogs like non-stop and like that's literally the sole purpose of the dog's life is to breed it's kind of like if somebody made you a, a people breeder and it forced you to have babies every year like that's terrible which usually those dogs have more problems they have more health issues I definitely um, didn't want to do that. I went to a pet store and I looked at one and it was the exact dog that I wanted, this little black cockapoo puppy. She was so cute and I wanted to take her home with me, but it was $1,500 and I'm, I'm like, I'm not about to pay $1,500 for a dog that may have problems in the future. Like that's not happening, especially if her life is gonna be shortened because she's puppy mill. Um, and then I went on Pet Finder online and I started to look up dogs in my area that were at least similar to the dogs that I was looking for. Um, so basically small dog, um, preferably some kind of poodle mix, um, some kind of mix. I didn't want a full bred. I didn't want an older dog. And all of the dogs that were cockapoos or poodle mixes that I was looking up at shelters were older. So I, I looked up a lot of different places. I wrote down some of the dogs that I, I saw online that I wanted to go see. Um, they have visitation days at different pet stores where you can go to the pet store and they have um, the shelters there and you can go and adopt. So I filled out applications, I went to these places, we looked at different dogs, we went and held them. My experiences weren't that great because I feel like the people at the shelters are very, very, very overprotective of their dog. They give you like an extensive background check. Like they are trying to make sure that you are not gonna adopt this dog and do it dirty. They have a million questions that they're gonna ask you. They're gonna be very invasive. They're gonna ask you if they can come to your house. It, for me, it wasn't a good experience because it's not like they were asking me these questions and being nice. Well, have you owned a dog before? Where are you gonna put the dog when you have it in the house? Well, where's it gonna go when you go on vacation? You know, they were kind of asking it in a way that was like, you don't know what you're doing. I'm not gonna give this dog to you. I also felt like it was a little bit biased because everybody in the room was not my color. And I was in a different neighborhood that wasn't my neighborhood. So I never got a call back for the dogs that I wanted. And I saw some really, really cute ones, but just wasn't working out. But nonetheless, it was a good experience because I got to see how that process works. Um, but at this point, I was starting to get desperate. It had been months at this point that I was looking at dogs and talking about it and like really like contemplating and thinking about it. And the winter was coming up, so I'm like, I need a dog before the winter time hits because I know it's gonna be rough. We actually got a text from our friends and it was like so random because they were like, hey, do you want a dog? And I'm like, some of you saw the vlog and when, that, when it actually happened, I, I vlogged it. I was like, Lord. Is this you? And they paid full price for the dog. They paid, I don't remember, I think like 1500 for the dog and we ended up only paying 500, or they were offering 500 for her. And so they sent us this really cute picture of this little dog. She was like brown and black. So we went to go to the house to meet her and this little white gray thing comes around the corner. And I'm like, who are you? They thought it was like a picture that you had Shelby. Cause she's a mix, she's a Yorkie Maltese mix. Apparently they change colors, I don't know. It's the Morky, because Maltese's are white and Yorkies are like brown and black. And we went to go see her, she was really sweet. She was jumping around, you know, a little tinkling everywhere, getting excited. I sat down on the couch and we were just talking to her, to her owners and she came, sat next to me and fell asleep. And I was like, yep, you're the one. But no, seriously though, she was super, super like, chill and just relax and I was like okay cool you know we're like okay we're gonna give it some time think about it when we got in the car Kim was like I want her and I was like okay mind you I did all this research and stuff and I had no idea what I was in for at all like I didn't have any preparations or nothing I had nothing at the house we were just like hey let's just do it let's just get her I don't know maybe like a week or two later we did the exchange um, and at church. right at church after church they came met us after church in the parking lot and we picked her up and she was so shaky and like scared and I was like, oh, weird, this is weird. What am I doing? Why am I doing this? Well, is this the right decision? They had, they already had food for her. They already had um, a leash and uh, most of the starter kit stuff that you need for a dog. Yeah, from there, it was a roller coaster. Um, we had talked to our friends about dog owning because they have a dog. We talked to them about dog owning and what it was like and they're like, okay, you should do this, this, and this. But it's like when people tell you stuff like that, you listen, but you don't necessarily know how to apply it yet. She was cool and everything. We put her in her crate and she like barked for like, what, 30 minutes? She was like crying and barking um, that night when we were trying to go to bed and I was like, 
Um, I, I had kind of planned out in my mind how I wanted my schedule to go um, as far as like when I'm going to take her out, when I'm going to feed her and all this stuff like that. Um, but she had a mind of her own at first. And I talked to a couple of my friends and stuff and they're like, yeah, yeah, she's, she's working on her own time right now. So you kind of have to be patient. So it was rough. I wanted to fight her. But then I also really liked her too. So it was like a toss up. It's like, you're cute and I love you, but I hate you at the same time because you just pooped on my floor. The first couple days I was so tired because I had to watch her like at all times of the day. I had to literally, my eyes were following her, looking around, trying to figure out where she's at, making sure she's not going in corners, peeing everywhere. Cause at first she didn't know where to go. So it's like, she doesn't know to go outside because she was basically crated for six months before I got her. She was never really outside. She never really had any experience with that. So it's like me taking her out, bringing her back in. She didn't know that going in the grass was what she was supposed to do. So like trying to teach her how to use the bathroom was like the hardest part. It took some time to get used to reading her signals and learning her. It's like a, a new relationship. You're learning this person, right? So you're learning a dog. You're learning what they're like and what, they, what they're telling me. Like, what are you telling me when you're barking? You get to learn my voice and learn what I'm calling her and what her name was, because we changed her name. Uh, it was definitely weird, but it was a good weird. It was kind of like teaching me and my husband how to be patient, because waking up in the middle of the night and taking the dog out was not in my plans, okay? But we did have to do that. It's like, a, it's like having a child, a baby. So I'm gonna answer some questions at this point because I'm, I think I'm done with my story as far as the background on how we got her. This person asks, was it difficult adjusting to having a dog? Yes, it was difficult, but it was worth it. I think the process is necessary and that's how you bond with your dog is through that process. Lisa asks, how did you potty train her? Is she really hype? Cause I have a puppy who's three weeks old and she's super hype and bites everything. Ha, yes, potty training was difficult. I, like I said, I read up a lot on potty training and how to do it properly because a lot of people don't potty train their dogs properly and that's why it doesn't work. Um, and so I, I looked up different methods and different techniques on how to do it, but the easiest way is to put your dog on a schedule, feed them at certain times, and then don't feed them at other times. So like you give your dog food and water at certain times during the day so you know right after they're gonna have to go. Cause usually smaller dogs like puppies, they gotta go like right after they eat, right after they've played or woke up from a nap. That's usually when they need to go. I had to continue to like make sure like every couple hours I was taking her out, um, even if she didn't have to go. Dogs work on consistency. At the beginning, we were crate training her or trying to crate train her, um, which is basically you have a crate for your dog. You put the dog in the crate when you're not playing with them or active with them or they're not eating or doing anything. Um, and when they normally when they're going to sleep or if you're gonna be leaving the house at any point in time, you wanna crate your dog. Crate training was not really working because we would put her in the crate and she would go in the crate, like she would pee in there. And I think that's only because her previous owners allowed her to be in her crate for so long that she had to pee in there. Um, Cause normally dogs will not pee or poop where they lay down. She was used to peeing in her crate. So she would pee in there and it wasn't really helping. I would just take her to the exact same spot until she got used to that area. They have like these glands that make a scent when they poop and when they pee. So when they go, they know their scent. That's why dogs sniff each other's butts because that's like their ID. Um, and that's also how they identify humans as well because she likes my underwear because <laughs> it smells like me like my my smell is on it so she knows me right so when they poop and pee in the house where they where you don't want them to go if you don't clean it up properly their scent is still going to be there so they're going to keep going there because they think that that's my spot i can do that i own that spot it's like territory marking yeah that's how i got her used to just going outside i would just take her outside and make sure i took her to the same spot so that she knew where to go after a certain hour if i feed her or give her too much water, she will want to wake up in the middle of the night more often. Um, when they're puppies, they're gonna wake up in the middle of the night regardless because they can't hold it that long. Uh, so you just be prepared to get up. I mean, it was tough. She did pee a lot on the floor, um, but I think once they get used to their surroundings, she started to learn, okay, if I go to the door and look at the door and then look at you, you'll know I have to go. <laughs> a lot of people asked how I taught her how to use the bell. If you guys follow me um, on social media, yeah, if you follow me on social media, you know that I got her a bell to tell me when she needs to go outside and I put it by the door. You're supposed to get the bells that hang from the door so that they can just like lift their paw up and hit it when they need to go. But I got a bell that like you ding, a ding bell, and I put it on the floor. She didn't know what to do with it. When she saw it, she looked at it and she was like, Witty DC, now she's going to the door right now, looking at the door and sniffing it. Can you take her out? No, this would be good for the video. 
No, it won't, because I'm filming the video right now. I need you to take it out. This is also another lesson I've learned. Dealing with other people and who's going to take the dog out. I actually didn't teach her how to use the bell. Um, I put the bell on the floor, and the first time she saw it, I, I like picked up her paw and was like, hey, hit the bell. A couple months later, Cam went to go take her out, and she rang the bell before she went. I guess she just wanted to get our attention, and so she was like, let me ring this bell, because they ain't paying no attention to me. I need to go. Now she rings the bell for everything, though. She definitely doesn't ring the bell to just to go to the bathroom anymore. Now she rings it when she's hungry. She rings it when she wants to play. She rings it for attention, which is unfortunate, because that's not the intent that I had got the bell for. But as far as like disciplining your dog, um, you don't want to be hard on your dog. Dogs don't necessarily think like humans. When they do something wrong or have an accident, they don't know that what they did was wrong. Disciplining your dog, spanking your dog, um, yelling at it, doesn't help. And I learned that quickly because I would yell at Gigi and she would just get scared and pee again. Um, and I've heard that's called submissive peeing which is weird, but like I would yell at her and she would pee. Why would you pee? And I literally just yelled at you for peeing. But you definitely are not supposed to be harsh like that to your dog. They do know when they're doing something wrong. If you yell, like right when they're doing it, like no, you clap really loud and like distract them and it's supposed to like make them stop, but she wouldn't stop. She was just reckless. I would clap and say no and go pick her up and take her outside and then be like potty and then you're supposed to congratulate you you're gonna be mad but you're supposed to congratulate them when they potty so you're supposed to reward them when they do something good ignore them when they do something bad um because they like attention and if you're not giving your dog attention they get they get kind of upset what are the different categories of expenses that come with owning a dog the first expense would be buying the dog depending on what kind of dog you're getting you could all your dog can run you anywhere from like five hundred dollars to two thousand three thousand dollars i know some people who have paid like up to ten thousand dollars for a dog especially if you're getting a special bred or designer dog, you're gonna be spending a little bit more money. If you do go to a shelter or adopt a dog, there is still a fee for that. Normally the fee is between like 200 to $500. Most breeders will provide the vaccinations and things like that um, for you. If they don't, they suck, don't go to them. Looking at her, I didn't get her original vaccinations. They, the previous owners took care of that for me, um, but they need like a couple shots that you have to get from a vet. The vet visit on its own is a, a fee within itself. She got her rabies vaccination, DHP vaccine, Bordetella, leptospirosis, and something else, all these big words that I can't say. It ended up being a total of $74 for all of her vaccinations. Those vaccinations are recurring. You do have to go back and get annual shots. Normal vet visits, as long as nothing's wrong, usually isn't bad. There is a fee when you go into a vet and get them a checkup or anything like that. It is a fee, but it's usually not that much. Now, when I first got Gigi, I wasn't being careful and I got water in her ear and her ears are like, upright so the water dripped down to her ear and created bacteria so she started scratching her ear a lot and caused an infection for the ear examination penicillin her e-collar she had to wear the collar around her face um, and all of her medicine and all that it ended up being hundred and sixty dollars that that was a little that made me a little upset plus it was sad because she was like throwing up and stuff from the medicine it was just really sad that was a sad moment for me if you do not want your dog to uh, be a baby mama or baby daddy, then you would want to get your dog spayed or neutered. They, they can't get spayed until six months. Um, because that's when they start getting the feel. We got her spayed. The spay cost 125. Pain injection was $22. Um, we also had to give her an exam before to know what kind of medicine she needed. So that was $18. And they also give you pain medications and things like that, um, which ended up all costing $255. After that, she was out for a week and she had to wear the e-collar. But she was okay though. She was pretty fine. Like the first day, she was like really drowsy, really tired. She couldn't really jump a lot. The next couple of days, she started feeling like herself um, after a while she was Gucci she just couldn't pick at her stitches she had stitches for a while she couldn't pick at them or anything because it would open up the womb oh they also pulled two of her teeth that was $20 I don't remember why they did that but they pulled two of her teeth too regular expenses like food bowls a crate all that stuff I would suggest getting all of your dog stuff from Amazon I actually ended up ordering her crate from Amazon and it was only like $20 whereas at PetSmart, which price matches now, so now they do price match, so you don't have to worry about spending that extra amount of money. But they, they were charging like $50, $60 for a crate. Food, 
Uh, usually that's like, what, $30 for a big bag of food. Not too bad. It's just different. It depends on how bougie your dog is. My dog is bougie, so she has a lot of extra expenses. This is her like play area, her playpen. Once she got used to going outside, I felt like I could put her in a playpen instead of just crating her. I got that so that she can have like room to like play with her toys and take a nap in her little tin or whatever so that she's more comfortable when we leave the house. This whole thing is actually a baby playpen. It's so that she doesn't hop over it or anything because she can jump. But I figured once we have kids, we can throw kids in there too. So it'll be dual purpose. She gets groomed often. Grooming is about $40. And I also pay for daycare. She goes at least once a week. Most of the time she just goes once a week, $30 a day. Not too bad, 33 to be exact, dollars a day. That's not too bad. And it gives her um, playtime. She'll be super tired when she gets home, so she'll sleep through the night. And she also gets exposure to other dogs, which is great because she's very, very friendly and she likes to play with other dogs. It was just the initial process of getting her and getting used to her and like buying all of her stuff to where it was like, okay, this is a lot. The only time she's expensive is when we take her on the plane. Um, because I like to go visit my family in Texas and I don't really have a set sitter for her yet and taking her to daycare and letting her stay bored at daycare is like $300 sometimes so you know I figured flying would be cheaper but it's not flying is a is a fee on its own it's 125 to take your dog on the plane both ways so we end up paying like 250 for her to fly now I have heard about getting your dog um, certified to be a service dog so that they can fly for free which I'm looking into at the moment was there any fear that you experienced prior to adopting Gigi you've never owned a dog I like a dog I have a bit of anxiety around doing the wrong thing or not being a good dog parent also did you choose Gigi or did Gigi choose you did I choose Gigi I think we chose each other I don't think we had a moment like a you're it moment, but it was just kind of like, I want a dog and you're sweet and you're cute. Let's do this. I did kind of, I kind of was scared about getting a dog just cause I didn't know what I was doing. But then again, I'm, I'm used to doing stuff and not knowing what I'm doing and just learning on the way. I have that kind of approach to life. So uh, I wasn't really scared. I was more scared of what it would be like to not have a dog. Getting a dog would be better than any fear or anxiety that I was already dealing with. I feel like they're like little angels. They, they emotionally support you in a way that you just wouldn't think they would. It's so weird. She's helped me a lot emotionally and it's a little bit scary thinking about it, but I think once you do it, you'll be, you won't be as nervous. How do you train a dog to listen to you such as sit, go to your bed? Dogs are very smart. They're very, very smart and they learn quickly, but anything that you do, if you want to teach them how to do something, you teach them on a rewards basis. So get some treats and go to town. They like to be rewarded and they like to uh, chew on things. So if you give them something to chew on, they're more than likely gonna listen to you. So I taught Gigi how to sit by giving her blueberries. You know, Gigi's been very intuitive and she's learned really quickly because she likes to make me happy. They want your attention, so when they do something good, give them your attention. How do I stop the excited pee that she does when she sees people and she'll pee on them? Ha! <laughs> So Gigi does the same thing. She's a little dog. So little dogs can't really control their bladder when they're excited. Um, so they will tinkle a little bit. There's really no way to get around that. She's still excited peas. What I try to do is when people, I know somebody's coming in the house, I'll try to make sure that I take her out before or when they get in the house, like immediately take her out before she goes and jumps on them. Unfortunately, that's just something you're just gonna have to deal with. <laughs> How would you suggest to budget or save for a puppy? Do a lot of research and however you save money, save money, but you're gonna need to do your research on the kind of dog that you want and make sure that you know the expenses that come with getting that dog. And just know that you're gonna be shelling out a couple hundred dollars at the beginning. That's just how it is. How is her vet? What are some things you noted when looking for clinic care? Her vet is pretty cool. I actually didn't really do a whole lot of research when it came to her vet. I just looked up the one that was next to me. They had good reviews on Yelp, so I went. And they've been pretty nice. My criteria for a vet was basically, are they clean? Does it look like doggy prison? Cause if it looks like a prison, I'm not taking my dog there. When I went in there, it looked very, very nice. It was clean, it was 
it was nice. It looked like a real clinic. Um, I've also been to Banfield, which is the pet hospital in PetSmart. I feel like a lot of people go there and they see a lot of dogs a lot, so they can't really give them the special care. But then again, maybe that's just me being bougie. I liked the place that, that I took her to because they were bougie looking. Will Gigi get any bigger or is she gonna say the size? She's gonna say the size. She's a small dog. She's a Yorkie Maltese mix and Yorkies and Malteses are both small breeds. So she's gonna stay that small. How long did it take me to train her? Um, it took me about four months before she recognized that she didn't need to go in the house, that like going in the house was bad. However, she still has accidents from time to time. It's not like on purpose or anything, but sometimes if I don't take her out at the right time or if she's been by herself for like longer than like six or seven hours, she will go. She doesn't want to. She knows when she goes inside, like she'll run under the bed and hide because she knows that she's in trouble. And she doesn't like to be yelled at. So when she's in trouble, she knows it and she feels bad. And so yeah, it took her about four or five months before we were clear that she knew she needs to go outside. From your experience with Gigi, would you want to adopt again? Honestly, I don't feel like if I got her from a breeder, I would love her any more or less. So I don't know, if I ever did get a dog again, adopting wouldn't be my only choice. I'm open to whatever. I feel like all dogs need a home, whether they're adopted or breeded or whatever, they need a home. I feel like if you wanna get a specific dog, you should go to a breeder because you can get what you want. If you wanna have the dog from the beginning, from when they're when they're essentially when they're born, but you can't get a dog when they're born. You have to get them when they're like six weeks or something like that. But if you want to start off with the dog and be the only owner of the dog, which makes it a little bit easier for them to get used to you and get trained and things like that, um, then go with a breeder. The prob the only problem I found with having an adopted dog is you have to deal with all of the emotional issues or disorders or any problems that the dog has. And I noticed that some of the issues that Gigi has as far as like separation anxiety and if she doesn't like to be in cars. Some of the things that I've noticed about her, um, I don't know if they are due to her previous owners or any neglect or anything that she dealt with before, um, but you just have to kind of be aware like if there are anything, anything goes wrong and you don't know about it, um, that's the kind of stuff you have to deal with when you're adopting. So it's not like, it, does, it doesn't turn me off from adopting because I love Gigi just the same, but you know, it just depends on what kind of problems the dogs have and stuff. You know what I'm saying? How many times does she need to attend vet appointments? Like I said, they have a schedule. So um, once a year, you do have to go get your dog checked up. Um, but other than that, you don't have to take your dog to the vet unless something's wrong. But just be careful with not taking your dog to the vet and trying to fix things using WebMD because WebMD will have you thinking that your dog's dying. Would you recommend grooming the dog yourself or taking your dog to a grooming service? I would recommend taking your dog to a grooming service depending on what kind of dog you have. Some people's dogs don't grow long hair. So like if your dog has a smooth coat and like it's just basically like skin, you can pretty much take care of your dog yourself. You can give your dog a bath. The only thing I wouldn't suggest doing at home is like cutting their nails or some things that like we have to go inside of their body to take care of stuff like their mouth or their eyes, their ears. I, like I said, I have a bougie dog and her hair is long and it gets matted and tangled really easily um, if I don't give her regular cuts. Also, it gets in her eyes and irritates her eyes if it's too long and I can't cut her face hair because she moves too much for me. So I take her to the groomer. I believe I answered all of the questions. I'm gonna put down in the description box some of the things that I like personally for my dog that I think that you should get um, as far as like stuff that you can buy to make your dog more comfortable. That's all. Um, I will talk to you guys in my next video. I hope this was helpful to you and that you liked it. And if you did, you please, please give me a thumbs up. Subscribe if you have not. And I'll see you guys in my next video, okay? Gigi, do you wanna come say bye? Say bye to the people. See, this is your video. Any other video, you'd be crawling all over the place trying to be in it. Say bye. Okay. Go be great.